Hello and welcome to Accounting Bots. In this video, I take this opportunity to explain a simple concept of effective amortization or effective interest method. And this particular method is prescribed in India as 109. One of the common complaints that I got from some of my friends who are trying to understand the India is, is that they feel some sense of emptiness when it comes to dealing with the financial instruments. Now, I will in this video explain a very very common phenomenon that we may face while we are doing either an NDIS audit or preparation of financials under the NDIS reporting requirements. And uh, just to give you the uh, small background, uh, under NDIS 109, a loan is a financial instrument because it gives rise to a financial asset of one person and a financial liability of another person. So, a loan contains fixed interest or principal repayments and thus it has to be accounted as per NDIS 109, I mean under effective interest method. Now, I, I will straightly jump into how the accounting is made rather than explaining the basis of effective interest method only that's because only if you understand the modus operandi of how this particular valuation is being done then you will be in a position to interpret the wordings in the accounting standards so what we will do is we will straight get into an illustration on how this particular uh, aspect is being covered so let's get into a situation where there is a hypothetical company the holding company it gives to its subsidiary a loan of 100 lakhs at 12% per annum. Plain simple, it is a it is a loan which is repayable at 12% per annum. Now, because this is India, yes, we also need to consider the market rate. So let us say the market rate is 15%. So the loan is payable in five annual installments. Let's see how we will treat this particular transaction in the existing I gap also under the NDIS. Now under the existing I gap, we don't really have to worry about this market rate of interest. All we need to worry about the transacted rate of interest and the transacted cash flow. So which goes something like that. So let's say let's let's fill this. Let's fill this particular uh, let's fill this particular table and find out what will be the impact. You need to know what is the impact under the I gap before you actually find out its impact in the NDIS. So initially it's going to start with just a second. Let's say it's going to start with an opening balance of 100 lakhs. I know as I said these are going to be repaid in five annual installments. So it's going to be 20, 20 lakh every every year. So the closing balance is going to be 80 lakhs for for the first year and the interest will be calculated at the opening balance and this is how it's going to go so what's going to happen is your so if you look at it the total interest that is being paid in this particular transaction is 36 lakhs and the total principal that is being repaid is 1 crore and the total cash flow that is being paid is 1 crore 36 lakhs that is this principal principal repayment of 1 crore interest repayment of 36 lakhs and 1 crore 36 lakhs and this is how we will be accounting under the existing I gap so now let's see what happens in the India scenario, what we do is when we are trying to account for this particular loan under the India is what we need to do is we have to compare it with the market rate of interest. So in the current case, the market rate of interest is 15%. So we need to discount this at 15%. So this total cash flow has to be discounted at 15%. So we are going to put the discount factor of 1 divided by 1.15. Uh, yeah so and again this discount factor is going to be divided by 1.15 
what we need to do is this discount factor has to be multiplied with the total cash flow. So now you have what you call as discounted cash flow. At this stage, if you look at it, it says though the value, though the principal value of the loan is 1 crore, the discounted value is 93 lakhs. That's because you have, the company has received a loan at a favorable interest rate when the market rate is 15%. It received interest at a 12%. So what NDIS asks you to do is account for the difference as an equity. So this H Limited is a holding company. What it asks you to do is it asks you to account for the difference between this and this as equity. So what happens in the books of journal entry in the books of subsidiary will be bank you have to debit to the extent of you will be debiting to the extent of 1 crore you will be crediting loan to the extent of 93 lakhs equity So this will be shown as equity. In the books of holding company, it will be investment, let's say loan, debit, investment, debit, bank. In the books of holding company, this 6 crore 59 lakhs will be added to the investment figures and this will be subjected to the impairment. So they will have to identify, let us say the paid up capital was let us say 10 lakhs. 10 lakhs is the paid up capital for this particular holding company or is the investment value. So this will be added and the total investment value will be shown as 16 lakhs 59,000 as total investment in subsidiary limited. So this will be the carrying amount of investment in the holding company's book 16 lakhs 59 thousand and which will be subject to impairment test. Now let's see what happens. Let's see what happens in the books of subsidiary company. Once you understand how the accounting takes place as a subsidiary company, you can pass the contra entries in the holding company. So having said that, uh, the present value of the loan is 93 lakhs 40 thousand. What India is requires you to do is ignore the impact of this 12 percent, consider the impact of 15 percent. So, the NDIS is derived from IFRS, which gives more importance to the substance over form. So, it wants you to account interest at the market rate. Now, how do we account for an interest at this market rate? So, what will happen is you will have to find out the interest as per NDIS. It will be 93,40,862 because that's the principal into 0.15. This is going to be the interest and principal repayment will be total cash flow minus interest. Please understand 32 lakhs of total cash flow in the year 1 is split as 12 lakhs as interest and 20 lakhs as principal under the I gap. But the same 32 lakhs is split as 14 lakhs as interest and 17 lakhs as an inter, you know, principal repayment. So, carrying amount will be 93 lakhs minus 17 lakhs. So, what will be the next? So, the interest for the next year will be this into 0.15. So, principal repayment will again be 29 lakhs minus this figure.
I'm sorry. So, so we will continue to find out the interest at the market rate and let's see what happens. Carrying amount will be I'm sorry about the uh, formula error. So let's see what's going to be the interest here. So if you look at it, if you look at it, the total cash flow again comes to 1 crore. 36 lakhs this total cash flow comes to 1 crore 36 lakhs and this cash flow is being split between interest and principal in this way under NDAs and this is how it gets accounted in IGA. You look at it the interest that is being hit to the profit and loss account is 42 lakhs under the NDIS. Had it been an I gap, the total interest would be only 36 lakhs. And the difference is being treated as an investment. 